So I have two nephews and recently they reached a fun age and by fun age that means they're starting to enjoy to do things that I also enjoy doing. And one of those things that we um, explored recently was launching lock rockets. And those rockets were the standard kind of rockets you find online. And this was actually a kit that came with a launch pad. There were two other rockets that are now stuck in trees. And to um, the engines for these rockets are these little uh, engines that go in the back of the rocket and shoot it off. The problem with these rockets, and I'm not knocking these rockets, I think they're great, but the problem with them is, is these engines are um, about 11 to 12 dollars for a pack of three. So it can quickly become a very expensive hobby, especially for kids who like to do things multiple, multiple, multiple times. In order to keep with the launching rocket funness and make it a much less expensive hobby, I started doing a little bit of reading on water rockets. And I'm going to attempt to make a launcher as well as some water rockets in time for Memorial Day. So the thing to start for this is going to be the base, which will hold up the rockets. I'm going to be making that out of a two by six and I'm going to be ripping it into smaller pieces. I have a, a pretty solid design in my head for what that's going to be. So I'm just going to start making that. And then once I have the base, I'll go about figuring out the mechanics behind launch, uh, launching the rockets. And the, the actual rockets are made out of soda bottles. And honestly, I think the hardest part of that is going to be getting the soda bottles because I do not drink soda. I'm going to start by cutting this in half ripping it down on my table saw, and then forming the base. So I have two sections of that 2x6 here. It ended up being 2 and 3 quarters, and I cut them to about 25 inches. And then I'm going to cut two grooves out of them and lap these two together. So I found center on both of them and then measured out an inch and a half, which is the thickness of my pieces. And then I came down halfway through, which is an inch and three eighths. And now I can cut these out on my table saw. I have my base lapped together and there's going to be a second base elevated up in the air which is where the launching mechanism is going to rest for this. Um, I don't know exactly the dimensions of that yet but since I have my blade set up to the right height I'm just cut these oversize and mark center and I'll cut two laps in these and if I have to cut them down when I assemble everything I will. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing to these two. So these are my two bases and this base is going to be elevated up in the air and I'm going to have arms connecting the two. So what I'm going to do now is put these aside, take this 2x6 I have left and rip it into one inch strips and those will be the arms that will connect the two pieces. With my pile of strips, these are all 54 and a half, so I mark center, which is 27 and a quarter. I'm going to cut all these in half. So I found some stuff around my shop in order to prop that top part of this base up to where it's going to go. And that way I could get the angle to cut these slats at. So there's that mark on the bottom of my piece for my angle. Now I'm just going to be trimming off the tops and bottoms of these so they sit flat on the ground. But it's easiest to get that mark on the top of that 2x4 versus the bottom. So once I have that mark, I could take my digital bevel and get the exact measurement. And it's about a 98 degree angle. 
So I can't cut a 98 degree angle on my table saw. So 180 minus 98 is going to be 82 degrees. So I set my, my bevel up, my gauge on my miter up to 82. So if you put this on there, you can see that that saw blade is going to cut that angle perfectly. Now I'm going to use my fence as a stop so I can cut the tops and the bottoms of these all identical so this is going to be the exact same height. So I slid my fence over just enough so that with this propped on my gauge it's just going to trim that little bit off which is what I want. Now the mark I made for the top and the bottom on this are parallel to each other. So that means that after I cut this one all I have to do is flip this one around and you can see I'll cut that one at a straight angle as well. So before I put this together I just have to drill some holes and you can see on the edges I marked in about an inch and a half and then centered which is three quarters and I'm going to be drilling half inch holes there and that's going to be for anchors for in the grass for tent stakes or whatever kind of spikes you make or have or buy that will go into this. Then for the arms I'm drilling a 9 30 seconds inch hole which will fit these four inch bolts and that will connect it to the base. So what I did was I came down another inch and a half, centered it at three quarters, and then I stacked, I'm going to do two sets at a time and drilled the holes on either end at once. And this I'm doing with a drill press so then I could prop it up on either side of here and drill through my uh, cut down two by six with a hand drill and then all my holes will line up. So you can see I already have three sets of these in place and basically what I'm doing is lining up this piece of wood with my mark, clamping it in place and drilling into this and then putting everything together. my bottom's in place before I attach the top I took this apart I'm going to put a bunch of glue in here and countersink one two and a half inch nail into this piece just to keep it in place while I glue the top So I clamp those two edges with those C clamps so nothing can move. Then I'm going to go around and use my other clamp to clamp the pieces and drill the holes right through for all four. Obviously before I do this I remove that bucket I was using as a spacer because it won't come out of the center. If you'll, You just have to reattach everything to get it out. But I'm going to go through and I'm lining these up the edge of these with the bottom edge of this. The pipe you're going to be using for uh, these bottle rockets, it's half inch PVC pipe and it fits 
perfectly inside the mouth of these bottles. And once you put a little O-ring on there, it will also seal it so it's watertight. So the outside diameter of these is a little over three quarters of an inch. So I have an inch spade bit and I'm going to drill through the center of my piece so that my pipe can come up through the center. off the construction of the base for these rockets I actually have this old cabinet door that's just about the perfect size for my top you can really use anything you have lying around I kind of wanted to steer clear of plywood just because it's hard to truly seal the ends of plywood and since water is going to be involved in this if they start getting in the end grain of that ply it will eventually start to delaminate so this already has a coating on it which is perfect and I don't mind, originally I was thinking of making it a circle, but I don't mind it being square. I was actually thinking of turning this into a circle, but this isn't solid lumber. It's, um, it's two pieces sandwiched, as, so there's a hollow core there. finished stand and I have the hole at the top which is where um, the, the tubing for the air is going to come through. So now I can start working on the launching mechanism for this project. So I have a bottle that I'm working off of and I have this half inch uh, piece of PVC pipe. So the design I'm using is what the, is having a launch tube inside the bottle, which is what that is right there. You don't have to have this long piece of pipe inside your bottle. You could have it as short as just enough to get air into the bottle. I decided to go with the launch tube because it seems like this launch tube acts quite similarly to the rods that you use when launching the engine powered engines and it helps keep it a little straight off the launch block so that's what I'm going to be using. Now the length of this is going to coincide with where you're putting your o-ring and that's what that black sharpie mark is. You're going to be putting your o-ring about a half inch up from the mouth of this bottle which on this bottle lines up with the two ridges um, visually which is kind of nice and I just want to make sure that it with that lined up I have some space at the top and that's just because most of these bottles are somewhat standard but in case one of them is a little bit off from another you have a little bit of play at the top of that bottle there so what I'm gonna do now is cut this at that black mark with a pipe cutter <laughs> 